my bad people i was arguing on the phone and shit. but uh we good we are here welcome to another edition of wake and pack people on a tuesday morning y'all as i get this bowl ready um shout out to everybody out there uh, let me actually see who's in here man looks like we uh got a packed house of sorts milto my boy good morning bro uh you know y'all know when y'all see my boy milto in the building hit that like button if you have not hey just just like clockwork as i start talking about it my boy says it hey my boy big nate is in the building shout out to packer fans with swagger man everybody over there my boy zane strong mahalo what's the word everybody exchanging pleasantries you know we love that hell yeah for sure and y'all already know man all you guys are welcome on 420 hpov boulevard man as i pack this bow but uh before we get into the real deal situation what the thumbnail is about the dynamic duo the one we have on our hands uh emmanuel wilson is officially back uh he's been signed and also the kicker daniel wheeling i mean not kicker but punter uh you know so i guess that's not a bad thing he didn't do anything like you know atrocious or he didn't do anything that had us like we need a new punter right uh so you know he's back in the fold um packers equipment uh guy or you know whatever you want, want to call him um red batty okay i don't know if that's his real name r-e-d-b-a-t-t-y but uh obviously he's retiring and a lot of the packers faithful you know definitely inside the building uh you know have been giving them you know him his flowers and you know i guess he was always doing a great job with the equipment and those are the kind of people who go unseen, you know, throughout seasons and seasons and seasons who, you know, the vets and stuff come to appreciate, you know, when they start getting older, because, you know, they they just see this dude consistently there doing his job for the same amount of years as they're doing. So, uh, hey, happy trails to whatever he want to do with the rest of his life, uh, you know, but he's a Packer for life. So we're going to give him a uh, 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 Green Bay, you know, adios and, you know, to whatever else he wants to do. OK, so. um. Brandy Lewis, what's up? Brandy in the building. Seriously, man, they should do it like shit, you know, like right after, <laughs> as soon as the season's done. I know that's how we want it. But, you know, we got to let some months go by of dead time so the draft can be as big as what it's going to be. So it is almost upon us. Again, like I say, when y'all see my boy, not just Milto, but when y'all see John Bainan in the building, you feel me? Shout out to TR. Yes, I seen that TR. Uh, didn't get the whole deal done, but uh, it's just upon me reading what I have read. It's just at the end of the read. It's just going to make me feel more satisfied and more faithful that this this organization is going to do what's needed to do, which we have been doing to stay competitive for what thirty plus years now, and we're just going to continue to do the same thing. We are cooking something good right now with our scouting department, with our draft and develop, how that's going. A lot of new coaches in the building. Like I tell everybody, what a great time to be a Packer fan. And I'm here, man. Sorry, it was a little late. And yeah, you're the boss too. I guess I'm the final boss. Hey, it's morning somewhere. Hell yeah, everybody chatting with each other. Y'all know I love that. Shout out to my boy Dave, man, and that's Niehoff. My nigga Freddie Roper's in the building, man. Everybody up in here today, man. I'm going to have to bring it. My boy Ernie. Definitely a uh, clickbait season. Uh, it's almost over, but I still seen some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It might be in my media sucks deal, but I've already expressed how I feel about Keyshawn Nixon, and you know I seen... You know, I seen an article talking about Nixon was the worst free agent. And I'm like, y'all just really want to get me riled up. huh? So I didn't even click on the article. Uh, I just, you know, went on to the next thing. Shout out to Thunder in the building, man. Hey, everybody get Thunder a warm welcome to 420 HPOB Boulevard. Uh, you know, we are Packers family here. And we talk about Packers every weekday. You know, weekends, I always tell everybody, y'all got to let me get my freak on.
Uh, well, Brandy, I don't know. It could be an offensive lineman. That's just that's just where my heart is right now. And again, I don't know shit, right? But my heart right now is they getting an old tackle, bro, in the first pick. I don't know, bro. Again, it always depends on how the draft falls. We do not know Goody's list. We don't know it, okay? It might fall perfect to him, and we get a pick, and everybody's like, why the hell did we get him? Because Goot wanted him from the beginning. If it's somebody that Goot wants and he gets, it works. Hey, we tried to get Preston Smith. Draft him. He was in our draft uh, little deal. Didn't get him. Movie dude. First time he a free agent, double round and get him. Same thing for Z Zadarius. I think it was one of them situations where we were. He was in our draft little thing, but didn't go right. Hey, shout out to Thunder, man. Hey, I appreciate that, bro. Uh, come through anytime. You know, uh, these might be interchangeable, too. I just had a set of standard with the Wake and Pack. You know, I did it at 930 Pacific time. Why? Because that's my birthday. I just like everything tied into organic and natural. And I just started like I started Wake and Pack like two days in a row because I had time. Now I said, fuck it. Let me just turn this into a thing. And now we are here where we are now, man. So I really, really appreciate everybody coming through, man. But uh, yeah, all right, so look. Hey, happy Emmanuel Wilson's back, and hey, the Packers are back to work, you guys. I don't know how excited I was just to see dudes walking around in cleats. And one picture I seen, because I always wondered, I'm like, just their swag together, just their dynamic together. I know it's even been mentioned on this channel. It's like, Xavier McKinney and Jair, oh my God, they're gonna feed off of each other. And just seeing them walk together, it's just like, okay, they already getting the shit together probably getting celebrations, handshakes, and all that together. I'm telling you, these are the times it happens now. All these, y'all see these motherfuckers make a play, they do all these handshakes and all that shit. This is the time that they get those things established. I'm just giving y'all insider of how football works, man. So, uh, and another thing I wanted to add on this, Xavier McKinney is an eraser, right? So what I always tell people, let me take a hit before Zane tells me to. The job wasn't just done. We didn't just get Xavier McKinney, right? We didn't just, oh, yeah, we did acquire him, but it's not about acquiring him. It's also about putting him with somebody, the company he's going to have around him. Him and Jair, man, just as far as attitude, swag, it just seemed like they're on the same kind of <coughs> <coughs> pretty much. You might find them niggas at a club together hanging out, or you might find, you know, they might do activities outside of football. It just seemed like that. And we ain't going to forget about the little bulldog, Carrington Valentine, either, because he ain't backing down from nothing. But what I'm saying is it's not just the McKinney signing that's so great. It's about what we have around him. Prime example, Aaron Donald. Clay Matthews couldn't do nothing for us, right? He got two sacks last year, three sacks last year at Green Bay. What happens the first year he goes to Los Angeles? Yes, he may have had still little in the tank. Yes, he may have been motivated from the Packers, getting rid of him the way they did, putting uh, his jersey number on Rashawn Gary. And the change of scenery, anybody going to play better coming to L.A. That motherfucker got eight or ten sacks. That wasn't because of Clay Matthews. That was because of Aaron Donald. Exchange Clay Matthews for who else the Rams done had over the years? Leonard Floyd. Same deal. Leonard Floyd ain't Leonard Floyd without Aaron Donald. You feel me? So not only is McKinney an eraser, but Jair is an eraser too. Jair can erase one side of the field. And McKinney could roam around and do his thing and erase whatever set side of the field at that point in time of the gameplay or the, or the play call that he needs to cover, bro. But them two together, and I'm not even talking about on the field yet. I'm just talking about feeding off of each other and, and attitude and all that. Boy, we got some dogs, man. So just seeing that picture, uh, you know, brought a joy to my heart. Hell yeah, get a homie Thunder a warm welcome. I mean, bro, been watching y'all, but you know what I'm saying? You know, this is the first live he caught. So, you know, we're we going we gonna to do it up for him. Uh, you're right about that. You know, or, you know, hey, Zach Tom, fourth round, you know. And uh, Rasheed was, you know, now with all due respect to Rasheed Walker, he did do a great job. He still was alternating with Yash, y'all. Don't forget that. It ain't like this nigga just came in week one and was just like the guy, okay? He has gotten better and really, really better. But uh, that's not to say that his job and his, uh, Position is solid, bro. Again, we play the best five. Stenovich knows. 
uh, uh, LaFleur knows, bro. Our best five is going to be out there. Hey, if you see Zach Tom at, at, at center, you might see him at center. You see him at right guard, you might see him at right guard. But I don't know. Depends on who we get in the draft. This thing is very interchangeable. Say we draft a, a, a left tackle who's probably going to be our left tackle, you know, franchise left tackle. We can start him at right, get his feet wet in the game before, you know, I don't know. It's a lot of shit that can happen. A lot of interchangeable things that can happen. So, but I, I see us getting a tackle in the first round, man, for real. Uh, yes. I mean, it's just a possibility. The only reason that's being talked about is because Myers, uh, his contract is around that time, right? And it's like, well, you know, it's pretty much on Myers. Is is he going to step up and be the center we need him to be, take control of the whole O-line, be aggressive like we have seen him at times? Is he going to be that guy or are we going to have to knock him to guard? Or is he going to be a rotational guy for depth? I don't know. But we could get better at the center position. But why would we take away this tackle, Zach Tom, who was the second? I'm just going to go out on a limb and say second. I might want to say first. I forgot which report I read. PFF or one of these people who track all this shit, but he pretty much he was a best first, second, or third best tackle in the game last year. Best right tackle, man. So, you know, I don't know why we will move that from there, you know, but I wouldn't say that our center uh play is that glaring to move Tom there, but maybe, you know, I don't know, bro. Hey, that's why I'm glad it ain't my decision to make. We we shall see. Hell yeah. Shout out to Thunder, everybody. For sure. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Hey, shout out to my boy, Joe. Yes, absolutely. Uh, look good, too. I mean, again, what did my coach say long time ago that stuck with me? Everybody looks good in shorts. But, you know, I was just happy to see him, A.J. Dillon, Josh Jacobs, everybody walking in the building and some nigga I didn't know. Well, Brandy, that's not the worst thing to, to get all defense. That's not the worst thing, especially not for this team. And if you would think with the way our office was cooking toward the end of the year, what we're going to do with another training camp under our belts where Matt LaFleur really knows who can do. He got a whole season of film on each and every one of these cats to know like what he can do with them. Y'all, please forgive Matt LaFleur for making the playoffs last year, first of all, and winning a playoff game. Forgive him for that, but just forgive him for the earlier stages where motherfucker, even Jair, Stepping out, talking about some. Oh, I guess we just can't let the other team score for us to win. Like, bro, this nigga was dealing with all kind of new parts, movements. Christian Watson was. That's what Matt Lafleur said. He said it's different when you you got something, you think you see it the whole time in training camp, and then once the week one game comes, like this person's out, this person's out. You got to change, it, it, bro. We're all human, bro. This ain't Madden. But yeah, ain't nothing wrong with drafting a little defense, Brandy. Yeah, and I think we're going to get that. And Jair is smart, right? I think at the end of this year, just like everybody on this team, bro, yo, this team all seems to Rashawn too. Everybody seems like, yo, we we almost had it, y'all. We, we 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 right there. Hey, you can tell that hey, when Jordan Love looked at that Lombardi trophy when he was on the Dan Patrick show, he was like, yeah, I want one of those. Bro, you're going to get one, bro, if you keep doing what you're doing. Jay Love, too, looking big. You know what I'm saying? I had the red jersey on. Hey, shoulders looking big. Hey, Jay Love's a big dude, too, man. Don't sleep on that 6'4". That's a big motherfucker back there. You know what I'm saying? Big hands and all that. You're right about that, Joe. And they, they, hey, shout out to Packers Kingdom, my boy Taylor Bell, uh, expert in his draft analysis and uh analysis and you know hopefully we get together to do something but uh that's how it goes man that's what i'm saying we can't get mad off of really any draft pick because the dude that they wanted might have been there two picks before and then they got to hurry up and change you know what i'm saying that the draft is this whole other monster like everybody has these mock drafts it looks cute. It looks good. This team needs a quarterback. This team needs this. This team needs that. But as soon as that one team does some fucked up shit, it changes the whole shit could go haywire, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's why I'm happy we got Jay Love so late. That's why I'm happy we got Aaron Rodgers so late. Just imagine. We all know this. Alex Smith, Aaron Rodgers, they was just, I don't know if it was a hair. I don't know if it was a coin flip on why they pick Alex Smith. But I'm so happy we got Rodgers. And I'm sure all you guys are. But that's kind of crazy. Imagine they pick Rodgers. You know, we probably would have ended up getting Alex Smith or maybe not. 
Maybe somebody else would have picked Alex Smith. Maybe somebody else seen Smith being higher than Rodgers, too. That just shows you how crazy the draft could go, y'all. So I'd rather just sit the fuck back, get some popcorn, give me a little smoke, give me a little drink, and just enjoy the draft. You know, why jump on and be mad at any Packer player for getting drafted? It ain't this man's fault. Be mad at the GM, which y'all do a lot. You know, Goop got to go. LaFleur got to go. We already know all that shit. But, like, be mad at the GM. Like, you get mad at Jordan Love because he gets drafted. You think he wanted to? Like, there wasn't nothing he could do about that. Anyway. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, the Bears are the worst, bro. Hey, I got you back. Hey, I got you back, Brandy. Oh, yeah. You know, and look, we, we forgive Clay. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't mad at him, but it, you can clearly tell that bro's still in his feelings. Shout out to Steve in the building. Oh, you on the milk? Ain't nothing wrong with milk. Nothing wrong with milk. It does the body good. Hell yeah, Thunder. Hey, you didn't know what you was getting into. We hey, we roll, we, 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 we ride hard in here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Jared Reyes. Me too. A lot of unsung people that nobody's talking about. What about Kobe Wooden? What about Brenton Cox? What if Brenton Cox just put it upon himself like nobody knows me? I came in last year, got injured. I showed flashes. Clearly, Brenton Cox did something to this coaching staff to ensure them that he's going to be getting snaps because he's also a person who I've been hearing about a lot. And with the injury of J.J., who knows how soon he'll be back. And J.J. was starting to cook. And Gabari was starting to, you know, get him a sack every other game, you know, get some pressures. Oh, yeah, like seventh round. Like, come on, dude. We literally threw. See, sometimes people don't make it. You see how Minnesota tried to play some cute shit with us? They threw their rookie in, and then by the second quarter, O'Connell's like pulling him out. First of all, you just fucked up his confidence there. You shouldn't have even started him. And why'd you even let go of Josh Dobbs? He was the only motherfucker winning games for you as soon as he walked in the building. And then y'all trade him. Minnesota got so many problems. You know, the Bears suck. The Bears still suck, and they will always suck no matter who they draft that quarterback. But Minnesota has issues, bro. They got issues, bro. They need a quarterback, and I think they're going to fumble the bag on this one. I think Chicago's going to fumble the bag on this one, too. Hey, I'm totally good with Tom at right tackle, but, you know, you know how it goes. About the best five, man. So, you know, if we're going to have to trust Stinovich and, and LaFleur and whoever else with the best five, but that is a thing. Oh, yeah, my bad. I should explain who they were. They got do what they got wave caps, all kind of shit on. That's Jair and Xavier McKinney, man. Uh, Jair and Xavier McKinney, man. You know, clearly, I don't know if they knew each other before, probably worked out before, but you know, they're getting their report going. They're going to have them a little handshake. And you know, Jair was a leader on the defense. So, you know, McKinney always wore the C on his chest, something Jair always wanted to do too. So, Jair probably just bringing him in, like, yo, let me show you how I go around, how I go down to Green Bay. Oh, that was a steal. He was a steal. Zach Tom in the fourth was a steal. Uh, uh, we don't even know if Sean Ryan was a steal yet. Uh, who else was a steal? Rasheed Walker in the sixth or seventh? Are you fucking kidding me? Seventh round? Like, come on, Packer fans. Like, we've been cooking the past three years, bro. And again, I am looking for LVN to get unleashed this year. We should see a lot of Lucas Van Ness. Hopefully he's on the edge. Hopefully he's on the right. Hopefully he's on the left. Hopefully he's over the middle. You know, hopefully he gets a little drop back. You know, not nothing crazy. You know, you could get, get a get a back out of the flat. You know what I'm saying? Or probably a tight end for a crosser route. But, you know, we don't want you deep down the field like Preston. But still, bro, like LVN will be unleashed. Again, people call Brooks. I am uh, I am so high on Carl Brooks. You know, um, let's not forget about big KC, Kenny Clark, if he doesn't get traded during the draft, you know. Oh, yeah. And, you know, let's not forget about the missing turkey leg that they didn't give Jordan Love for Thanksgiving. Let's not forget about us beating the current Super Bowl champions, okay? With a clinching play. I don't want to say his name, you guys. I don't want to get anybody mad. I don't. I know Heavy.com is watching. Make another article. We seen Keyshawn Nixon make a game-changing play to the would-be Super Bowl MVP, Pat Mahomes. Interception. 
just look at that play to see athletic ability. It wasn't the easiest catch, but he made it look easy. He had to twerk his body a, a certain kind of way. Twerk, not twerk. Twerk. Like, you know, you got to, whatever. He can twerk all, all he wants. Hey, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. I give him, I give him, I give him 222, 225. You know, I give him 225, but that's a big boy, man. That's a big boy, man. That's why I think we should have more design runs for him. Not in a Jalen Hurts capacity. No. Not in a uh, Josh Allen capacity. No. But two plays, man. Let Jay Love, you know, and he gotta he gotta get better with running the ball as a ball handler. That is one thing. He looks so awkward and too high. You see when the good runners that are quarterbacks, Josh Allen just runs over everybody, but Russell Wilson, uh, Lamar Jackson, they got a low gravity kind of run that they run with. Uh, Jay Love be running too high, like, bro, cover the ball. It just, you know, but again, he has to run more in order to know how to do it in game situations. I say Aaron Rodgers probably had more rush yards than Jordan Love up until this point in their careers. Aaron Rodgers, you remember him two times a game or three times a game, he would take off for tip 10 or 15 or 20 yards. Yes, he would. Oh, yeah, and that's, you know, see, when you just keep somebody like LaFleur did, LaFleur's so nice when he first came in, all right, I'm going to keep you petting, da, da 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 like, bro, but when you clean house, that shows something to the players. All those players know. I know, hey, as a player, when a new coach comes in, that nigga ain't seen shit that you done did. He don't remember the historic practices you did shutting down the team and this and that. So we got to show him now. So don't think that Coach O, our new defensive line coach, who who he's going he's gonna to move up in this in this, in this this NFL deal. Campanile, he's going to move up in this NFL deal. He's on his way to be a, a top-tier coordinator. Halfley, I only give him two years with us. Somebody going to snatch him up quick. Every Everywhere Halfley has been, wherever they did mass, uh, uh, you know, moves, he stayed. He's been with two or three coaching staffs who fired their whole staff, brought in a new coach, but they kept him in there, bro. That shows you Richard Sherman bigs him up. He worked with one of the best corners in the league ever. Rondé Barber picked his brain. So we in good shape, bro. For real, for real, like, People just think it's Madden, bro. And even Madden is hard, but people just think you could just plug and play. Oh, he's hurt. Put him in. No. Just like the game in Buffalo two years ago, I think now, when Christian Watson got hurt in the first drive, you can kind of tell that that game plan was based around Christian Watson because of the first couple plays they went to him. I said, oh, they're getting them involved early. I said, this is going to be a big game for Christian Watson. Boom. You know, uh, a concussion out. We won't be seeing I'll be sure again. Uh, see, that's another tricky thing, man. You know, maybe Green Bay's trying to get ahead of the game and put him at guard because tackles get the best money, right? Especially left tackle, but he ain't going to be a left tackle. But, uh, yeah, that's the same thing. That's what, you know, sorry that Green Bay gets football players. You know, sorry that Keyshawn, straight punt and kick return. We don't need nothing else from him. God forbid people get injured. Eric Stokes doesn't play. Jair's missing a lot of time. We're starting Ballantyne and Ballantyne still out there winning games. And y'all mad at Keyshawn Nixon. Who the fuck else would get burned? Not Ballantyne. You know, he's a journeyman, been around a couple teams, know the league. Ballantyne, just getting him at the seventh pick and just seeing that he just did not sink, right? Sometimes you sink or swim, and he did not sink, and he stood on our toes, and he will be back too. He's going to be a little bulldog, too, so add him with Jair and Eric Stokes. Like, man, if this all comes together, man, if this all comes together. Yes, TR, but at the same time, see, a lot of dudes get shined who I don't know if they're supposed to. Because, you know, we've seen many a times people in college were the best college player ever, didn't come to the NFL, didn't translate. So uh, dropping back actually is a less risk, right? Again, you got a pool of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of players, good players too. But I think the ones who are not deserving are, 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 are you know, maybe just had a great year in college, good coaching. You know, most of the quarterbacks who go to the national. But – yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if trading back helps because it's the more safe pick. You still could get a good player with less of a risk. I'd much rather get a Devontae Adams in the second round like we did than 
fucking whoever. Okay, we could even say Calvin Johnson in the first round. Okay, oh yeah, Detroit, you got Calvin Johnson first rounder, Megatron, probably one of the best receivers y'all ever had. Okay, we got Devonte in the second round. Same deal for us, buddy. You just have to pay this dude a whole lot more. You know what I'm saying? Bro, Zane, the next four or five players we pick going to be legends. Have you not seen how Goot has been cooking this year, people? Not this year, but the past three years. Look at these last drafts, bro. Like, we got some gems. Jaden Reed. And then again, let's not just think these guys are just going to come back and do what they did last year. No, they're going to do better. You don't think Jaden Reed want to do better? You don't think Romeo want to do better? You don't think Christian Watson really want to get in there? He's like, man, all these niggas that got shine over me. I've been hurt too much. Romeo didn't establish himself. We got Bo Melton getting in. Jaden Reed, first year coming in, did stuff I couldn't do. You don't think Christian Watson sitting there chomping at the bid? The man went to the University of Wisconsin, him along with Eric Stokes, to check out that issue, the soft tissue issue, and it seems to be handled. I don't know who's to blame, but both of those dudes, thin frame type dudes, and too fast for their own good, that's just a bad combination. If they had a little meat on their bones, if, if, if I'll be sure it was a little more, you know, hood, you know, it would be, you know, a different story. But again, we got who we got. And I think it's going to work out anyway. Uh, We hope so. But crossers on any against any anything really hurts because it's like a moving part. Like when you play zone and you go against a crosser. Yeah, you might have somebody in this zone, but the crosser keeps going. Who's covering that zone? Who's covering the next zone? When it comes to man, if you run two crossers, one this way and one that way, it's man. And especially with good how, how good these slot uh, receivers are, like a motherfucker going to get open. So we're still going to be hit with crossers. I just hope we're not getting hit with big plays from tight ends wide open in the middle of the field. But a crosser route is always going to get you at some point. You know what I'm saying? If you do it enough, you're just going to get caught on it. A slant. A drag, like you're going to get caught on one because, again, as soon as they make the cut, they just keep going. The the defender might trip, you know, like, you know, if you pass the zone, somebody, he, oh, this ain't my man no more. Let me go focus over here and do wide open. It's, you know, Crosser's always going to hurt. But, of course, he's an eraser, so he's going to help, you know, get rid of a lot of that stuff. But we will still see Crossers. Well, Steve, he's going to get his chance this year. We will be seeing him this year. I really hope to start hearing about this guy early in training camp and a lot of this stuff so we can see what he's really about. But he's the first name I heard last year as soon as JJ got hurt. Britton Cox, remember him? Remember him? Remember him? I'm like, hold on. Let me do my little research. Hey, the team speaks highly of him. Everybody, LaFleur, I heard everybody talk highly of him. So we're going to see what he can do. And hey, you said he's a freak, Steve. So we're going to see. Oh, Thunder. Hey, Thunder, he's more than hungry, bro. You just see the look on his face. And again, I told everybody they're putting a the jetpack in his back. They getting them ready for everything. Prime time television, all that. We already did that this year, this past year. Now, OK, we're going to send you overseas. Let's see how you handle this quarterback one on your first game or your second season. It's just not normal. He might not get a, a Lambo home opener his whole career the way that they fucking figuring this shit out. Hey, that's another dude. Uh, hello, I'm a Rudy Ford guy. Again, I don't know the details of Rudy Ford, but Anthony Johnson Jr., yes, is a guy, playable character. And, and again, it's not him. It's what you bring with him, okay? What do we have? Anthony Johnson Jr. last year, right? Okay, but now imagine him with the guidance and just his job being easier because we got a guy like Xavier McKinney with a horrible RAS, okay? I'm telling you, he has a horrible RAS. So people who really pay close attention to that, play close attention to Xavier McKinney so we can figure out where the people who make the RAS fucked up at. That is a dream, but I think that's his ceiling. I think he can get to that level. He's got the measurables, so it's going to take a little luck. It's going to take coaching. It's going to take a lot of determination. So I think he could do it. Hey, for sure. Hey, that sounds good to me. I don't know how long it took you to come up with that, but, uh, you know, a, a lot of Asians there, and uh, I love it, bro. That's right. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, he's not that guy, but you know, uh, pressure up the middle where he will be at uh, something he's good at. And, you know, quarterbacks hate pressure in the middle, just like, uh, Tom Brady, best quarterback ever in life. But if you ask him, what's the issue with him is pressure in the middle. If you get pressure from the outside, you can manipulate the pocket. You can move this way, move that way. But when it's coming straight up the middle and you backpedaling, it's a hard deal. And uh, again, shout out to Jair Alexander. Shout out to the homie Cage TV too. But shout out to Jair here, Alexander, while we're on the subject of Tom Brady, the only player in NFL history to intercept Tom Brady two times in the playoffs. How about that? Uh, it is a possibility, bro. It's a possibility, but I think he can be an outlier and I think he can be an exception. I know everybody knows, oh, Green Bay don't keep people for third contracts and this and that. But again, let's remember, first of all, how you look on the field. That's the first question. Still getting it done at a high level. Go look at the last few games, okay? Secondly, he was drafted as the youngest player at the time to ever be drafted. You know, I don't know if, if somebody would come in younger after that, but at that time, he was the youngest player. So we kind of got a year, you know what I'm saying? Another, you know, they say get rid of somebody a year too early or a year too late. Like, we we might be a year before, you know? I, I don't know. But, I mean, if you look at Kenny Clark, especially with the help he's going to be getting, how are we going to be screaming for two, three years, let's get Kenny help? And when we finally got him help, we're going to get rid of him. No, Devontae Wyatt needs to step up. You know, he really does. First rounder. Yeah, that's 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 another thing, Brandy. You know, it ain't even just about Kenny and what he's doing on the field. We got to pay 10. You know, we got to pay him. You know what I'm saying? And somebody, somebody's going to be collateral that probably why we didn't keep Campbell. Probably why we didn't do a lot of stuff. And again, give the Packers credit. We are saving up to pay Jordan Love what he deserves and what he's going to outplay. Man, just look at how good he's been playing before. When you give him the money, he's going to feel validated and he's going to want to show you guys like, I am that nigga. So watch out for Jordan Love, bro. Hello, first year starting and he his numbers rival Dak Prescott, a guy who's been in the league for, what, eight, nine years, um, been in his offense, well-oiled machine offense, and you got Jay Love coming in first time around, niggas he don't even know yet, playing with, and, and LaFleur, the coaching, and the deep, like, with all the problems we had, you know what I'm saying? Jay Love did that? Please, man, give that motherfucker the money. I hope we do, bro. I hope we keep him, but somebody might be collateral damage, man. You don't think you know House of Red Wine. Shout out to the boy House of Red Wine. Yes, he did work with Darrell Revis. He did. And then the thing about that, I love Halfley's coaching because after a player fucks up, he doesn't yell at him. He says some players, like, after they first fuck up, they'll come back thinking they're going to hear it from me. But then I'll just ask them a question. What did you see? You know what I'm saying? There's, there's different ways to coach, man. You don't just, oh, motherfucker. Like, that works with some. But sometimes, you know, when you think you're about to get yelled at and you don't get yelled at, that's like a good feeling on the field. It's like it makes you feel better the next play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brandy, hey, she ain't, hey, fuck milk. If we trade a Clark, Brandy going to need a wine. She going to need some wine. You know, she going to need an IPA. Hey, she might need a shot of some whiskey or something after, if that happened. You know, I know Hey, when people commit to a jersey, I know my boy was happy when he brought the Devontae jersey the year before. You know, he traded him. He's like, I got it. I looked at it. I said, oh, that's crispy. The next year you get traded. I'm like, damn, boy. Yeah, you're right. But again, if there's any exception, any outlier, can it be Kenny Clark? You know, come on now. UCLA. Brandy. This is the exact reason I told y'all why do fools fall in love? Y'all seen it. I was this guy. I used to look at drafts and I'll start listening to um, my old Mel Kuyper, Todd Michelle. I'll listen to some of their draft picks and see the player that they picked the Packers going to pick. I'm like, okay, let me do some research on them. Then I fall in love with the kid. And then come draft day, we don't pick them. And then whatever team he does go to, I'm going to forever have that connection, which I no longer want to have, Brandy. That's why don't give me a name in a draft. Don't tell me, oh, Todd Davis from Texas, we need him. No, just tell me the stat line. Just tell me the attributes. 6'2", run stopper. You know what I'm saying? Give me that. Give me the, the, the you know, the year-making model. But don't don't tell me the, the name of the, you know, 
I mean, that didn't go with it. But y'all know what I'm saying. Like, bro, just tell me the capabilities, what they could do. Because even a couple years ago, Chris Olave, I'm like, oh, man, if we get him, that'd be... Nope, didn't do it. So I stopped doing that, Brandy. I suggest everybody who watches this, unless you just like to go crazy. And then, because then we're going to be thinking about, oh, man, we could have got... Imagine, hey, really imagine some of us were in love with TJ Watt in the draft. And look who we ended up getting, you know? Uh, Eric Stokes. I mean, no, uh, what's his nigga name? Kenny, Kevin, Ke Kevin King. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, though, you know, shout out to TR. At the time, though, like, let's not act like we didn't think Kevin King was a gem. He was looked at in the draft as like a, a, a mini Richard Sherman type. So, of course, we did that. But then, look, now look at Imagine if us, we really wanted TJ Watt. We'd be, we'd be shitting in our pants right now. Got to, bro. He got to be hungry seeing everybody take some shine. And he really thinks in his own heart, like, I'm better than all of them. He's just that kind of dude. Yeah, I do that. I flip that 50K so much. I'll be so busy flipping it, it, it. It'll be a season anyway over with. So, yeah, I'll take that. You ain't just about to hand me no money like that. Yeah, for sure. Hey. I be watch. Hey, I know every player in the XFL, or USFL, whatever the fuck they got out there. Hey, I be at every college game, every USC game. I get through a year. Would it be painful? Of course, you know. But fifty k, shit. You know what I do with that fifty k right now? Uh, um, that could be something going wrong too, though. You know, that could be a wrong route a wrong read, but we do know that he can make any throw. So I'm going to equip it with that. But yes, I mean, he overthrew and underthrew a few of them, you know, so did Rogers, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you got to think he's working on that. You got to think he's working on that, but, uh, yeah, but he can make every throw, but yeah, uh, that could be a dangerous play. We've seen. Hey, you damn, hey, you damn right, Brandy. So we might, hey, shit, give me the 50K. Hey, y'all, y'all answer the question. If y'all, y'all take the 50K, just put 50K in the chat, man. I want to know how y'all think. I'm taking the 50K. I'll do fine without the NFL for a year. You know, I will. I mean, would it, would it hurt? Yes. But sometimes shit, shit, semen retention is good. You know, I like to fuck all day, every day, but sometimes, bro, you know, even that's why boxers, certain kind of athletes, they don't they don't fuck around like that when it's, you know, important shit coming up. You know what I'm saying? And make a difference. So I could do without it. Hey, Thunder, you ain't lying, man. Oh, he's going to come and be better. That's why I'm telling a lot of people. It's like we're not only getting these new toys that we're going to get in the draft or McKinney and Josh Jacobs. We also have guys that are ascending that are going to get better just by default, just anyway. And with a better coaching staff, like y'all crazy, bro. It's going down this year. Shout out to everybody in the chat, bro. Shout out to everybody, you know, watching, man. If you have not hit the like button, hit the like button, please. Let's run it up, man. Today is a good day. I think we need him regardless, Brandy. I, I love me some Rudy Ford. Shout out to Dave. Me and Dave on the same page. Hell yeah. Hey, y'all heard my boy, John. Hey, that shit free as hell. You want to get rid of your good deed of the day without even leaving the house? Go ahead and hit the like button for your boy, man. Subscribe if you haven't. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? You know, Packers content every day through the weekdays. And, you know, some more shit going to be coming up, too. I'm, I'm cooking up more stuff. Just, you know, trying to make some time. I got the gaming channel going, too. Trying to get the wrestling channel going, you know, on top of what I do every day. So, you know, please work with me. But yeah, I really appreciate it when y'all be, you know, give me like a reason to want to do it. And uh, today is a good example of that. Everybody hit that like button, please. Yeah, you got to think like, man, you know, we're going to give Halfley all his toys for this year. And then maybe it'll be a decision where Halfley could be like, you know, not like the decisions on him, but he could see a whole season with Kenny and see if we extend them further than that. But if you just ask me, I think Kenny is here to stay, but I am saying he could be just a hit by a straight bullet. Cause we got to pay love somehow, some way, bro. And after a while, you know, we got these, uh, all these wide receivers. We love to rant and rave about. We can't keep them all forever y'all. So we're going to have to make some hard decisions, probably trade one of them before just losing them for nothing. Right. So we got to figure a lot of shit out, but uh, that's why I'm happy. It ain't my job. It ain't y'all's job. We get to sit back. 
wait till September and then just smoke up, eat up, cook up, watch the games. So we ain't got to deal with none of that. Let's let these people do their jobs, man. Yeah, well, they won't, Milto. That's why me and you and all of us here, all my waking Packers, and then that is our names. You know what I'm saying? I'm think other channels got whatever they names is that they cruise and all that. We just the waking Packers, bro. That's just what we is, bro. We the waking Packers, man. Unless y'all got a better name out there, but nah, it, it, we the waking Packers. That's authentic. That's organic. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with bourbon. Oh, we got to pay him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jack is my friend. For sure. I'll take the money. Oh, yeah. No, seriously. Hey, we giving it. No. Daniel Jones. Well, David, you're smart. Look at Daniel Jones film highlights, whatever the fuck, his best game ever, whatever you want to look at. Then look at Jordan Love. Then look at their their measurables. Then look at their just their posture. Their stat like Jordan Love is a man. Okay, I ain't, no offense to Daniel Jones, but it seems to me I'm on the outside looking in that Jordan Love is already a better leader than Daniel Jones, and Daniel Jones been with his team. I mean, with the same amount of time, but Daniel Jones has been a starter. But it seemed like Jordan Love without without any effort really picked up and became a leader, man. Hell yeah, this uh this a historic day right here, man. On a random motherfucking Tuesday, right? So again, this waking pack, like you never know when it's gonna go down on this street. Just make sure you have your lights on, bro. That's all I'm saying. Oh, we brandy hitting it hard. Hey, good fucking answer there. Hey, I'm just uh, you know, I'm just thinking about what I could do with that 50k like right now, right now. I'll be like, fuck the season, you know, but nah, I mean. If cooler heads prevail, uh, no, I'm not. But you know what? That's why I say I'll watch other football, though. Now, you talk about taking football away completely, I don't know. But they just said the NFL. But, no, I, I do feel that I share the same love as you, Brandy. But, uh, Brandy, you ain't going to take that 50K? You get your hair done. You go get you, you go get you that Porsche. Like, come on, Brandy. Hey, they got their Porsches. Um, they all they wives got their Porsches and whatever they want, Brandy. You gotta live a little now. But yeah, no, football is my sanctuary, also. Always have been. Ernie said he's going for the money, y'all. Yeah, for sure. If Caleb Jones ever gets a shot, you know, and they did keep him on the team. I really want to know what's the issue. Maybe I think it's just fatigue or something. He a big boy, but like the way he moves, bro, for a guy that's 6'9", 360, 370 is just incredible. Like, you're not going to push him. So your your only hope is to get around him. And he's athletic enough and just a block. Like, I really hope. But give more credit and respect to Rasheed Walker because they had a one-on-one -on -one battle in camp. They could have started Caleb Jones all they wanted, you know, but something showed him that Rasheed is a guy. And they said that Yash is better than Caleb Jones. So I don't know if he's just going to be – a rotational guy just sitting back there, but he's a fucking mammoth. 6'9". And again, you could be 6'9", 370 in just a big block. He has actually, he has sweet feet. You know, so we'll see. Hell yeah, bro. Hey, we might have broke the record. We done crept around it before, but we ain't, I don't know if we hit that yet. Hey, <laughs> I can't argue that, Milto. I can't argue that. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and you know what? Like, now I'm undervaluing it. Now, Brandy ain't crazy, right? But I'm undervaluing it because just even a day's, you know, long days at work or whatever, you know, you got a jersey on or you got a, a Packers shirt on and, you know, or just going to work and your other colleagues who, you know, are fans of other teams, customers come in, talking shit, like, you know, every week. And that's why another thing, y'all, y'all should be fucking appreciative to be Packer fans, man. Because, you know, throughout my life, you know, I've had jobs working retail or whatever. And, you know, a lot of it is oriented by teams and shit. So Packers done got me a lot of a lot of got that got me through a lot of work years. Twelve times out of four, 11 times, you know, 12 times out of 16, but, you know, pretty much winning 12, 11, 10, just being a competitive team week in and week out, being happy to wear my jersey to work. Like even that's undervalued. 
you know, all the memorabilia I have in this, you know, like that's Packer, like uh, that's a lot of uh, that's undervalued about it. But uh, I still take the 50K right now. I go, boy, hey, I I'll make that shit 150K. Promise you. Thunder taking the 50K. Uh, well, that, that would be anyone. That was a whole gripe about Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, uh, the new dude over in Carolina right now, Bryce Young. Uh, you know, so, but again, man, Aaron Rodgers 6'2", right? But Jordan Love a whole 6'4", so even if he does have problem seeing behind that, 6'4", uh, is a lot better than 6'2", a lot better than 5'9", you know? Seriously unheard of, and, you know, I, I like to relate it to, you know, the Patriots, how big their run has been, which has been incredible, all the rings they got, all that. I know people don't want to be saying this, but the other team who won just as many as games as them in that time period was the Packers. Now, it wasn't the Super Bowls, but you can also take away the questionable things that they were doing to get the Super Bowls. If we was filming, niggas, if we was flattening balls, if we was whatever the fuck else was going on in Foxborough, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we was doing some of that kind of shit, we might have got us one. You know what I'm saying? If we knew the signals and did all, you know, if we were cheating, we might have got one. But, uh, you know, the Packers don't cheat. They beat. And, uh, you know, everybody just be appreciative. We've been a winning team for like 30 years straight, man. Even the rough years, like the rough years, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, we had like a 6-9 in one year. You know, that's just an, that's just one year. And then we come back. McCarthy's last year. Oh, this is horrible. LaFleur, come back. You know, like, man, we we, we got it good. Uh, whew. He going to need the hardware for that, Brandy. He's going to need the hardware for that. But as far as communicator, that's the thing about Phil Jackson. He'll do some shit to make y'all win in the game. And, you know, he'll he'll make he'll put people against each other on the team, make them mad at each other. But he knows that's going to bring that best outcome in the game coming up. You know what I'm saying? I never forget. I seen one of my coaches like he pulled uh, two of the offensive linemen to the side. And he, I, I, I seen what he said. He's like, oh, yeah, get him. Like, I need y'all to really show him because, you know. I was having a little good little cocky time in practice. So soon I seen that, I knew they was doubling me. Swam on one nigga, and the other nigga, I just hit him with one of them. And it was over with in the backfield. God damn it. Yeah, coach, don't don't call me out. I seen you whispering to them talking about double team HBOV. I ain't going for that. I had to split that shit in the backfield. And I had the starting center telling me to calm down when we line up. He's like, hey, man, chill. Nah, bro, we got a fucking game on Friday, bro. We cool and all that. We cool in class and all that, but I'm making you better. Nigga, I'm about to whoop your ass. Yeah, uh, I put Pittsburgh up there. Uh, whew. I was about to say, you know, the team in the Bay, but I ain't even going to get them that much credit because, look, the last two they went to, they didn't even win. But, you know, yeah, Pittsburgh only comes close to that. And I would say that we are the Pittsburgh of the NFC. They are the Packers of the AFC. All right? But, uh, shit. Hey, man, we're about to go on the hour. This has been great. I really thank everybody for coming through. Hey, if you ain't a hater, hit that like button, bro. You know, we already got enough closet watchers around here. Y'all know hey, I got Milto and John Bainer with the devices, man. They let me know who's watching, who's doing what and all that. But, uh, hey, man, appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming through today. You already know what time it is. Let me let me get my breath together. Shout out to David Niehoff, y'all. That is Niehoff. Brandy Lewis, my favorite, of course. Thunder coming through. Shout out to the homie Thunder, man. Hey. Warm welcome to HPOV Boulevard. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Any other Packer fan, you know, hey, tell them to tune into this channel. Thank you for coming through and welcome to the family. Milto, of course. Shout out to TR. Ernie Martinez, my boy, of course. John Bainan. Shout out to Big Nate for coming through. Packers fans with swagger over there. Um, shout out to Packers Kingdom, my boy Taylor Bell. If I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. My boy, of course, thank you for everything you do, Zane. Shout out to Zane Strong. Steve, shout out to Steve, Carlos Baldwin, my boy, Freddie Roper coming through the building. My boy Joe came through the building today. Shout out to Joe, man. Uh, and again, if I forgot about you, I did not forget about you. Um, I got my boy Carlos, Jerry Reyes, Thunder. Yeah, packed house, packed show today. I really appreciate it. Still feel like I'm missing somebody. Ernie Martinez, but again, if I forgot about you, I did not forget about you. It'll come. Freddie Roper, I said. I might have got everybody. TR, I might have got everybody. All right. Hey, after a minute, shit, we're going to have to do top 10 shout outs or something like that, man. But uh, that's only a good thing. That's only growth on this channel. And uh, I will see y'all tomorrow. Hump day.